So we're going to talk about exponentials and graphs. Some of you may have worked with this before. Some of you may not have. Um, so let's just kind of, so let's just go as if you had it. I know it's, it's, it's better to assume you haven't than that you have. Because some days I'm thinking, oh, this is just review and I'll blow through it. Then I believe some people do. So let's not. All right. So an exponential function. So we're going to say A is our base. Um, and X is the exponent. So, and so here by the following. So we, for now, we're going to say A is positive and A is not equal to one. If A is not positive, things get funny. If A is not equal to one, things get funny. Or if A equals to one, it's boring, right? Because one to any power is still just one. So A has to be positive. Can we do negative stuff? Yes. Are you guys going to do negative stuff? No. <laughs> okay. So here, just state the base. So the base of A is just 23, right? It's just what's on the bottom. Here, the base is 2 sevenths. And so it's actually everything. And the base can be a variable, right? It can be just Y. So let's actually graph. Let's graph two of these. So let's do from negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right. And so we're here we're going to graph a half to the x power and a 2 to the x power. So 2 to the x, so base 2 and a base half. Okay. All right. And I'm going to use two different colors for this. So let's just do 2. So 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 to the second power is 4. 2 to the third power is 8. 2 to the minus 1 power is 1 over 2, so that's a half. 2 to the minus 2 power is 1 over 2 squared, which is a fourth. And then 2 to the minus 3rd power is an eighth. Let's use red for the other one. All right, so half to the 0 power is 1. Half to the 1st power is 2, or half, right? Half to the 2nd power would be a fourth. Half times a half would be an eighth. The negative 1st power would be 1 over a half. And so 1 over half is the same thing as 2, which makes this 4, which makes this 8. All right, so let's graph this. So at minus 3, we're pretty low here. We'll be a fourth here, a half here, or 1 here. Here we're at 2. Oh, no, we're at 2, and I didn't hit 2. I'm on the wrong layer. Here we're at 4, and here we're at 8. And so we have this exponential curve right here. That was a terrible drawing of that. Okay, that's a little bit better. And then here in red, here we're at 8, here we're at 4, here we're at 2, a half, a fourth, an eighth. Okay, and so here, I just want to write down here, if A is between, is less than 1, but still greater than 0, we'll have the same pattern. So it'll be the same pattern. It goes down pretty strong. Okay. And if A is greater than 1, we'll also have the same pattern. Let me show you what this what I mean by that in decimals real quick. It never touches zero. No, it never touches zero. My graphs get look like they do, and here I kind of crossed over a tiny bit, but in truth they don't. So let's look at this real quick. All right, so y equals x or two to the x, right? Let me do it this way. Y equals two to the x. And then we'll have this be and we'll get rid of this couple. There we go. So here we have our graph perfectly right here. And notice here if I make this three. I make this 4, I make, or I make this 58. It all looks the same. It's just how steep it is, right? And even if I make this like 0 0.05, I mean, maybe not so, like half and a 4th, 
worth. It's just how steep this is, but it always follows the same pattern. And here for these, here if I have a third, a 40th, right, it just gets steeper. And then here if I have 0 0.5, it gets less steep. Okay. And so, and even if I have like, say we have 3 over 4, so that's less than 1, right? It always, if this is called exponential decay, this is called exponential growth. You'll see this a lot in biology and stuff. Um, so it always follows the same pattern. Okay, so let's go to the next set. Oh, perfectly. So I've already kind of over explained it, but that's perfectly fine. I rather over explained and under explained. All right, so exponential functions. Nope, right here. <laughs> so here, um, so exponential functions, as long as a, as long as we have a greater than zero and not equal to one, its domain is all real numbers, right? And its range is from zero to infinity, right? And we notice that from our graph. Um, let's go look at these graphs real quick. Notice it goes, it doesn't reach zero, but and either way, you can like zoom out and we can probably, you know, gets close to infinity, it gets infinitely large. So it's from zero to infinity. The line, the line y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. That's a, an asymptote, horizontal asymptote. is a line that the graph approaches but never crosses, crosses or reaches. So it never goes past that line and never reaches that line. So that's what it means to be an asymptote. If you ever used and seen that term before. So once again, as we showed before, if a is greater than a is greater than zero, it's going to come up and go through here. Notice it's always going to go through the point one zero or uh, <laughs> zero one, right? And the same thing in here. Oops, go through here. This is also going to go through the point zero one because anything to zero power is one. And so, as we see in general, if a is greater than one and if a is less than one, in general, it follows this. Okay, so knowing all this, we can do transformations. Um, so we can do transformations here. So what is this? So this is taking our 2x graph. So here we'll just take 2x in here. So y equals 2x, which we already kind of graphed before, which goes up here, hits 2, hits 4, goes up to 8, right? So here we're just going to move it down 1, right? So here we're just going to move it down one. And so how do we do this? What I like to do is we move the asymptote, right? So this is my new asymptote. This point moves exactly to this point. And we just go ahead and graph it in. Okay. So here, what I usually do if I have to move something, I move the asymptote around. All right. So what does this say? Here, let's go back to our 2x. So let's, we have our 2x as our normal graph here. So let's go ahead and plug that one in. I did not do that correctly, but that's fine. Two, four, and eight. So this is our normal graph. What are we doing this time? We're going to be moving it to the right by one. Remember, if I replace x with x plus one, you move it to the right by one. And if I negate it, I flip it upside down. And so here, I'm going to take this point. I'm going to move it right. So here, I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the zero, one point. I'm going to move it to the right by one because of this, right? And then I'm going to flip it upside down, which is here. And so here, this graph looks like this. Two, three, and four. Oops. Well, without the little kink in it. Okay. So you can perform transformations on these just as well as you can do anything else. All right. So let's talk about compound interest. So this is something you're going to want to get used to because almost everyone, well, at some point, most of you take out a loan of something, right? Maybe a student loan, maybe whatever, right? House loan. So compound interest. So this is the, the compound interest formula. Uh, simple interest is when it's, simple interest is when you just calculate once a year, compound interest is how many times per year, right? Um, and so here is the amount 
that is due, or the total amount is the principal. Principal is how much you put in, or how much you originally put in or took out. So if you're, there's a very famous saying, uh, those, those who understand interest earn it, those who don't pay it. <laughs> it's an old saying, but it's true. Um, so the principal is how much you either took, uh, pulled out or took in. The one times your rate, and this is, um, your rate's given in percentage, but you need to write this as a decimal. Let me write that as a decimal. I spelled that word wrong. <laughs> so write this as a decimal. The N is the number of times it's compounded, and T is how many years, right? So the easiest way to explain this is just with a real practical example. All right, so a student takes out a $30,000 loan at a rate of 7 percent per year. Find the amount of the loan after four years compounded annually, semi-annually, monthly, and daily. Okay, so here, A of T. So let's just do it in general. So the 30,000 is my loan amount, right? This is my loan amount. We'll type in one plus, it'll be 0 0.07. So we write the percent as a decimal, N and N and after four years, and so the time will be four, okay? So for annually, we have N equal one, so that's annually, so that's once a year, that's simple interest. So here, we type this in, we'll get 30,000 times one plus 0 0.07 over one times one to the fourth, I pre-crunched these numbers to save us time today. So that's 39,323 and 88 cents. Let's do it semi-annually, so twice. A of T, I'll write this one out and then I probably won't write out the other ones. So I'll just give you the answers. This is one plus 0 0.07 over two times two to the fourth. I right, two times four, um, and this is equal to zero, nine, and this is 554.27. Okay, and then the last two, I'm just gonna type in the calculator and pump out the answers for you. And I do want you to see how to type it in a calculator. Um, I just think it's super useful. So let's pull up our Wolfram Alpha, which is our class calculator. You can use whatever calculator you want. Um, so here we're going to type in 30,000. Then we're going to type in 1 plus. Then you're going to put in parentheses 0 0.07 divided by, in this case, we're doing monthly, so that'd be 12. Close the parentheses raised to the power of 12 times 4. And it should look like this, okay? So please check that it looks correct. All right, so here we get uh, 39 and 1,661 and 62 cents. So n equals 12, we'll say a of t, and I'll just write down this number. So 3966162, and then n equal 365, close enough, right? We'll just assume it's not a leap year, right? And we'll just swap this out for 365. Swap this one out for 365. Hey, that's not a three now, is it? And here we get 3,962, or 39,692 and 83 cents. So just go ahead and write that down. So notice the more times we compound it, the faster this number grows, right? So if you're taking out a loan for four years, and so I just chose these numbers because this is about what student loans were at. This is about what someone, the average person takes out, and it takes about four years, right? And so notice, 
um, depending on who or what or how often it's compounded. Um, please read the alone details. It's just all over the map. I once upon a time believed, oops, that's six, nine, two, point eight, I once upon a time believed that everything was just compounded continuously. It's not the case. But. So notice the more times we compound it, the more it's um, the more the more money they charge you, basically, right? Um, so All right, so let's finish these notes and then I'll let you guys look at anything we missed at the end. So here, so some mathematician thought, gee, let's just figure out this. We're almost done. So let's just figure out if I had, let's just figure out the Z. And we're gonna calculate for 1% interest for one year and what happens if I just keep crunching through this number, right? So I'm gonna get rid of this. So let's do this together. So let's just do, let's just do n equals to one, two, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, And yeah, let's just uh, let's do ten to the sixth and like ten to the seventh. I know I skipped one in the middle, but that's fine. All right, so let's just crunch through these numbers super fast. I'll do a couple with you, and then I'll just write down all the answers. So we have one plus one. Of one divided by n to the n power. I somehow botched that. All right, so we're going to start with n equal to one. Pretty boring, right? So that's two. If n equals two, we get nine fourths, two point two five. If n equals ten. Or let's just put in a hundred. Let's just start jumping a little bit faster. I get I get two point seven zero. And then if I put in ten to the put in a thousand, I get two point seven. Yeah, this is the exact result. A little bit crazy, but I get two point seven one six nine. And then if I put in, let's just put in the last one. All right, so we'll just put in ten to Seven. Now, why am I doing this? And to the seven. There we go. Let me make sure that it crunches it correctly. All right. So it seems to be kind of stably rising about two point seven one something something. No matter how big I make this number, like if I put in like nine here, put in nine here. 2.718, and so it seems to be kind of approaching a number. So let me just put in the values I have. So what do we find? Well, we found it to be two. We found it to be 2.25. At 100, it was 2.704. Eight. A thousand was 2.71. Six nine. This it was 2.71814, 2.71827, and then 2.71828. And so eventually, if we just took this number and brought it to infinity, we get this what we call the natural number e. And this natural number e um, is irrational. It, it never, it's kind of like pi, it's just one of those things. And it's approximately equal to this. So this is more digits than you ever need. I always just do, I use 2.12 if I want to be really lazy. So 2.712 is what I usually do. 
um, if I want to use, or 2.7 if I'm doing in, in, in head calculations. And so here we have a natural. So this is called the natural exponent, and this is the natural number. Um, so this is the natural, if we call E the natural number, this is the natural exponent. The reason it's called the natural number, because um, it appears in nature all the time, just what happens, right? And sometimes known as the exponential function, E to the X, right? So here, um, you can perform transformations on it. Let's actually graph point E to the X real quick. Uh, yes, that's 7.1, 2 point, yeah. So once we hear this is 2.71828, don't worry about these numbers specifically, right? But yeah. So, all right, so let's go back to our graph. Or my graphs, go back to my graph. Graph me, here we go. All right, so here we have e to the x. So this is what e to the x looks like. It's like 2.7, so it looks exactly like how we suspect it would look because it's greater than 1, right? And here, just to show you quickly, we can perform transformations on that. So if I have e to the x minus 1, oops, I forgot, to the x. <laughs> Minus one. Here, all I've done is move my point of one zero down one, and then here at one, if I have my new thing, and here if I add plus two to the top, let's go ahead and do that one on the same one. E to the x plus plus. No, nope. it's going to make me do it this way, which is fine. Notice I've just moved this and I've shifted it two units to the left. Okay, so the same same song, same dance. So let's just go ahead and quickly sketch those in. And then we're almost done. And we'll be on time. All right, so E to the X just looks something like this. Goes through one, pops up, goes through. E to the X goes through one, pops up, goes through. Here, for this, remember, we just put in a new asymptote. We just move our asymptote down one. We move this down one, and we just draw it in. Here, we just move to the left by two units. And we just go ahead and draw that in. Okay. So you can perform all the transformations. All right, so let's... Oh, boy. I forgot about this. Mm, yeah, we got time. So I made these notes a while ago, and it's like I wasn't done. All right, you two. We got five minutes. I know I'm going at a good clip, but I do want to get you guys out on time. All right. So here you just move it down one. Here we to the left one. I'm sorry that we have a lot to cover, but I do want you to be free later. So, all right, let's do this one. Uh, super timely this is, unless we have an infection to disease in a small city. <laughs> um, let's just see how it goes, right? And so here, rate of infection is actually sometimes uses these awful looking things. So this is actually a real, um, number, right? Um, so we have an infectious disease. And so that has a rate of infection according to this. And so here, the number of infected people. So we plug this in. So I'm just going to crunch through these numbers just to save us time. So, oops. No one All right. Don't do that. <laughs> do this. All right. So here, if we plug in zero, um, we're just going to get Okay, because this becomes two, uh, this becomes 1250, which is one eighth of 10,000, right? So we have eight infected people. So we start with day zero with eight infected people walk into a small city of 10,000. And we just plug this into a calculator. 
And so that's all you're doing. You would not do this by hand. You plug this into a calculator and then double check you did it correctly. By day two, we'd have 20 something people infected, right? Um, day four, we have 54. And day three, we have 137. And day five, we have 686. And day eight, we have 808. And at day 10, we have 69. Okay. So if we're going to graph this, this would be number of people on this side. This would be the day. Uh, let's make this, I think I had this a one, two, three, four, five. Oh, good. I did this correctly. One, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Sorry. Whoop. And then one, two, three, four, five. So this is day five. This is day 10. Um, we need to go to about 2,000, so let's make this 2,000 and make this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're at the 4 mark. We're going to make this 10,000. And so notice here we have like 8, which is barely registered, about 20, which still doesn't register too much, 254, which is starting to register, um, to 100. And So here at zero, we have eight. Here we have that. We have that. Actually, it should be lower than this. And we have here. At five, we're a little bit over here. And then at eight, way up here. And then nine and ten. And this isn't a terribly inaccurate curve for an infection rate. So it looks like this. So basically, what happens we keep people get infected and then it kind of so this is kind of leveling off of our curve right so people get infected but then the infection is people get healed from the infection at the same rate people are getting infected and so it tends to level off um this is not the graph for the current pandemic at all this is for a different type of infectious disease um yeah We'll just leave it at that. So the last thing you want to do is continuously compounded interest. And so let's just finish the thought we had from here. So as we made n larger and larger and larger, what happens if we take n to infinity, right? I want to compound an infinite number of times. Say, just pretend I'm a bank, right? I want the most money possible. I'm going to compound it infinitely, right? Every day, every second, right? And so basically, mathematicians figured out how to do that. So this the formula simplifies to this. And let me just write in the answer and we'll call it a day. So here, the amount of $3,000 is equal to the rate of, so be E, and then we just type in our rate, which is 0 0.07 times T, which in our case was four years. If we crunch that through a calculator, we're going to get 39,693.89 cents. Okay. So notice, um, let me just quickly go back to this number. So here it's like a buck more, right? Is E just a variable? No, E is our natural number. E is, e is this puppy. Okay. Yeah, E is E's our, um, our natural number. Okay. And so, and notice here, it also appears in the infection rate. And so, yeah, it's only like a buck more. But it's just, if you wanted to compound infinitely. All right, so that's two sections.